and welcome to Connected, the show that keeps you connected with all things local. I'm your host, Ashley Jones, and today we have a great lineup on the show. We'll be talking to Rick Burnett, Gwenda Zappalag, and Mark Lowndes. But first, let's check out what's happening in town. One of Australia's finest vocalists, Anthony Kalia, returns to South East Queensland for a one night only performance at Twin Towns in Tweed Heads. That's August 10. His latest album, entitled 30, includes both some original compositions and also some covers which have influenced him. A rare opportunity to meet one of the world's greatest performers happens on August 12 at the QPAC Concert Hall. Legendary American folk singer Joan Baez has returned to Australia and is still an inspiration for generations of many songwriters. For a family fun day out, get along to the Heldon Heritage Fair on the 11th of August in Arthur Street through Heldon. There'll be plenty of rides, entertainment, displays, food and games for all. Australian rocker James Rain comes to town August 11 with a special show at the Paddo Tavern. Formerly of Australian crawl fame, Rain is still creating music with his album entitled 13, released early last year. A local trio, the Kransky Sisters, are back home for a series of shows beginning August 9, that's at the Brisbane Powerhouse. Their fun and entertaining show entitled A Piece of Cake is sure to delight attendees easily from start to finish. Don't forget to stay connected through our website and Facebook page for more events. My first guest is the CEO for Keep Queensland Beautiful. Keep Queensland Beautiful is Queensland's longest standing community-based environment organisation. The environmental outcomes of their programs include increased environmental awareness and action, reduced litter, improved resource management and a sustainable Queensland. It's welcome to the show, Rick Burnett. Thank you, Ashley. Thanks for having me. Good to have you back on air yeah, as well. Nice to be here. <laughs> uh, and of course, in your role now with Keep Queensland Beautiful, uh, how well are we doing at keeping Queensland beautiful? Well, very unfortunately, we're doing Badly. Mm -hmm. um, for the last three years, Queensland's been the most littered state in mainland Australia. So it's not a good uh, position for us to be no. in. So what are we doing? Why are we, why are we so careless? I think we're, we're out of a bad... Uh, we're, we're in a bad behaviour and out of good habits. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at, uh, say, the last 20 years, we haven't had a campaign like Do the Right Thing, we're a public campaign, uh, for that 20 years and that's a whole generation of young people that have missed out on getting a message to say mm. littering is antisocial and unacceptable. And I guess we saw the perfect example of that with the water restrictions when people really embraced it. I mean it hits them where it hurts in the fact that if we run out of water we're in deep trouble yeah. but it also people did respond. Do you think it's possible that if we get that message out again in that similar campaign that people would stop littering? I do. In fact, um, it's interesting because the water was brought upon us by uh, nature and we had to uh, get that message out there very rapidly for people to reduce their water usage. And I think the amount of money, if you think about it, the amount of money they spent on that campaign was enormous, millions and millions of dollars. But it did change behaviour. And the key to the whole thing about litter, I think, is to remind people continuously that littering is unacceptable. It's, a, it's an environmental hazard too. I I mean, every uh, piece of litter that ends up on the ground has a very high potential for getting into the waterways. And if it is plastic or cigarette butts, cigarette butts are the most littered item on the planet. Really? 20 billion in Australia wow. alone a year are dropped on the ground. Mm -hmm. And a third of those finish up in the water. So the big uh, worry is that litter gets to the water, plastic bags, another horrendous poison of our environment, sure. uh, and these plastic bags and, and butts get into the water and they are immediately a death trap for mammals in the, in the marine mm. environment. So how can people get involved? Obviously start thinking about not littering and clean-up days, those kind of things? Yeah, we have... Uh, well, we first, you can report litterers. It's an offence, and the members of the public can actually report them. They do have to tie it with a car registration. So if they see something being thrown out of a car, um, they can definitely report it. So that's one thing. Um, go onto our website, which is Keep Queensland Beautiful. Just Google it. Um, and you'll see the various programs there. The one that I'm really into at the moment is Adopt a Spot. So members of the public can adopt a local park, they can adopt a street, and they can um, keep it clean on a regular basis. And we'll put up a sign saying, this park is cared for by the Springfield Gardens mm -hmm. or the Springfield population or wherever it might be. 
That's a fantastic initiative. Yeah, yeah. And, and that gets the community very involved in their local sure. patch. I guess uh, by being able to own your own little area, at least you feel responsible for something. Absolutely, yeah. and, you're, and you're creating change. Wonderful to see you, Rick. Thanks for telling us about what's happening with Thank Keep Queensland Beautiful. Thank you very much, Ashley. Cheers. And if you'd like to know more about Keep Queensland Beautiful, you can visit the website, as Rick said, and the details are on the screen right now. Make sure you stay around because after the break, we'll be hearing about the Brisbane Arts Trails and much, much more. Stay connected. Welcome back to Connected. I know many of you would love to take a break and go on a great tour, but not sure where? Well, no need to worry, because with me right now is Gwenda Zappala, and she is the Australian representative for the Sabah Tourism Board. Welcome, Gwenda. Thank you so much. So where is Sabah? Sabah actually is the northern tip of the island of Borneo. Uh, it originally was part of the British Empire, uh, and as such, English is widely spoken and it's very easy to get around. The currency there is the Malaysian ringgit, and we've got a great conversion rate at the moment, about three ringgit for one Australian dollar. That sounds pretty fair to me. <laughs> so very attractive to It is. Them, yes. So why would the organisation actually be structured and, and function like you are as the Australian representative? OK, uh, we're looking for a share in the Australian market and the Australian tourist is a very good tourist to Sapa. Not only do they stay in the cities, they get out in the country and they spend uh, widely in the country and in the city. So we really are targeting our share of the Australian market. And I guess that's an important point too, Gwenda, in the sense that we often think of just the large cities, but the country really allows us to get an insight into the culture and the hospitality of the, the nation that we might be visiting. Absolutely. We have a wonderful big mountain there, Mount Kinabalu, 4,095 metres to the very top. It is, in fact, Asia's highest uh, mountain, um, and it takes two days to hike to the top. So there are lots of uh, adventurous people who like to get up there. Uh, and uh, as well as that, we have fantastic dive sites on our east coast. We have Sipadan, which is regarded by many as the world's number one dive site. But I saw recently in the paper it was listed as number five, but it really is up there. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly everything to see, loads of turtles, sharks, barracuda, schooling jackfish. And if you don't want to necessarily get into the great adventure stuff that you, as you've outlined, Plenty of space to sit back and just relax? Yes, we have lots of resorts that cater for the family or the couples. And we even have a market segment now that are going offshore to get married. So weddings overseas, uh, particularly second marriages, uh, people like to go away and have an experience that's unique for a smaller party. So we fit into that category very nicely. So being so close to Australia too, I guess uh, it's not too expensive? It's not too expensive. Uh, you would fly out of Brisbane uh, on either Malaysian Airlines or Singapore Airlines uh, over their various capi uh, capital cities and on to Sabah. And uh, then it's uh, what, flight across or other modes uh, of Out of Kuala Lumpur, a two and a half hour flight mm -hmm. and a similar time frame out of Singapore. And is it family friendly or do you find it is more for you say young couples or older people? No, it is family friendly, lots of activities for the, for the children, mm -hmm. wonderful white sandy beaches, uh, areas to swim, soft adventure. Sounds beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess you love going there. I do love going there. Uh, on the Australian side too, we uh, did unfortunately have a death march there just after World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two battalions that were sent to Sandakan as POWs and we lost 99.6% uh, of those young troops okay. mm -hmm. on the death march. So we celebrate Anzac Day, our World War II heritage. And also in uh, August, we've established 15 August as Sandakan Day. Mm. Fantastic. Brenda, thank you so much for, for sharing that insight with us. Thank you. And uh, earlier this week, we sent out our team to find out what the Brisbane Arts Trail is all about. Let's find out. I am Sue. I'm one of the Brisbane Greeters. Um, the Brisbane Greeter Program is an initiative of the Brisbane City Council and Brisbane Marketing. And it's a very exciting program. There are around about 90 greeters currently who showcase the Brisbane City to visitors and locals. 
One of the um, most popular tours that we do take is the public art tour. And this public art tour is special, very, very special to Brisbane because we have so many pieces of public art. A lot of people don't realize when they visit the city that that's what they're looking at. They'll walk around the city and they're so busy looking at traffic lights and buildings that they don't actually look at the lovely pieces of art that we have. One of the um, artists that has quite a few pieces around Brisbane is Christopher Trotter. And uh, he's done some absolutely wonderful work. And I believe that's who we're going to be showcasing and you will be meeting during our program today. This piece is titled Biomechanical Pelicans and it was done in 1995. And it's a piece made, actually predominantly uh, there's outboard motor components used in this, obviously from the, from the river and uh, just referencing the importance of how we should keep our waterways clear and clean and that way we'll get these beautiful birds and uh, creatures back living amongst us in our built environment. Uh, this piece is called City Roos. I did it in 1999 as part of a refurbishment of the uh, George Street Boulevard. And one thing that I've noticed is that natives are getting pushed further and further away from uh, our built environment. In fact, you know, I can remember living at Oxley and seeing roadkill so close to town. So this piece is about sharing space. So I've got these kangaroos that have come into town and they're, they're lounging around and uh, you know, I think it's important that we should look after our natives. And so uh, here they are. Uh, this piece is called Millennium Fossil and it was done in 2000, right at the turn of the millennium and it's a, a bug form as you can see which was a little play on the old Millennium Bug. And we're here in the Roma Street Parklands and uh, this is uh, the old shunting yards for the railway line so I used components that came from the rail industry to create this as well as early transport. This piece was uh, a, a work that I did on site where I actually uh, attached my metal to the reinforcing that was built into this concrete wall. The concrete was poured and then uh, the next, over the next days we pulled the formwork off and then I, using a magnet I found where my artwork was and then I used air tools to chisel it away to reveal, to reveal it like an archaeological dig. Well this, this sculpture was created in uh, 2000 and it was, uh, it's called Frog's Hollow and it was inspired by what the area used to be known as and it used to be quite a low-lying area, well it still is a low-lying area and subject to flooding and there was frogs and um, it was inspired by the natives and you think of um, the uh, lilies and fungus and mushrooms and things. So the artwork is actually attached to the Smellies building and that used to be uh, a building that was very much into uh, metal and metal and manufacture back in the probably 1900s and so this piece is another reference uh, using steel and giving the uh, building a bit of a new life as well. So how did you actually do this? I mean, the steel is set into the concrete. Did you have to chip it out or how did you do it? Yeah, I did. The idea was that um, because of my architecture training, I knew that uh, concrete and steel go together. So you got mm. the reinforcing inside the steel. So they have the same expansion rate. So what I did was, I did a test panel just across the other side, uh, which is a Besser brick size piece. And then uh, the idea was that I made this uh, skeletal uh, fish, which sort of references the kangaroo point uh, glyphs. And um, I, embed, I, I submerged this horizontally into a wet bed of concrete. Oh, okay. And then I let the concrete go hard, <laughs> and then I dug it out again like an archeological dig. Yeah. I like to have pieces where you can just <laughs> It's amazing how just a simple turning of a wheel, a kid can enjoy yeah. spinning a gear or something like yeah. that. Yeah, because they'll all try it, won't they? They will. Mm. Well, Alison Lynn, thank you very much for coming. This is the end of the tour for today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed yes. taking you around. If you have enjoyed it, we'd really love it if you could like us on Facebook. We've got a Brisbane Greeters Facebook Thanks page. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for Thanks very much. Well, we now have a special guest with us on the show. He's a singer and songwriter who reached the finals of Australia's Got Talent last year. Not only did he do well on the show, but he also has a new upcoming EP. Would you please welcome to the show, 
The one and only, Mark Lowndes. Mm. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you, Ashley. Such a build-up. We should have had some applause or something yeah. happening there, hey? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can yeah. yay for me. So uh, Australia's Got Talent. Yeah. That must have been quite an exciting process for you to go right from auditions through to the pr almost yeah. the end of the show. Yeah, no, um, to, be, to be honest, what people see on the, the, like the first audition on TV, uh, that was actually the third audition. So you don't see the two previous rounds before that, obviously because there's so many people they get through. Sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, that experience was, was awesome. There was a lot of ups and a lot of downs and a lot of things you got to deal with mentally. And, but I mean, overall, that experience, I, I, I couldn't have asked for anything more. Was that strategic for you to go and do that competition or was it really kind of a, a process for you to look at how you might break into the industry? Uh, I think I just went. I just went and then one, like maybe a day before the, the first audition, I was like, you know what, this could really work out. Mm. But then I had all and you know, the pros and cons going through my head and it, obviously the cons were just rampant in my head. And I, mm. so I was like, you know what, who cares, let's, let's just go, go for it. So it ended up becoming more strategic as I went. So I wouldn't say before it, but as the show went on, I was like, you know, this could really go really well. And as a singer-songwriter, what mm. uh, would we say the key inspiration for you in your songs? Oh, uh, I would have to say life. I don't know, like, this is like, in general. Yeah. Uh, I got fan, I got, you know, I got a wife and two kids. So those two, my two sons, they're inspiring enough as much as they drive me up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're, you know, they're, they're, those two are just, and a massive inspiration as well as my wife and, and everything else that I see and you know, experience as well. So just life, yeah. And so how long have you been performing? Uh, performing, maybe about eight, eight, eight years, but mm -hmm. singing all up about 11, 12. Okay. Yeah. So the new EP out very soon. Tell yes, us about that. very soon. Um, I, this is my third EP. So, and it's, it will, there'll be seven tracks on there, seven songs. Uh, I'm very excited to see this because I'm, I've put so much into it, you know, um, yeah, um, yeah, saved up all my tuck shop money, you can say, <laughs> and, and, and I'll just put it all in to this one project. And uh, working with the right people has been, I guess, a, a massive thing for me. And I've just got everyone in place and it's going really well. It's going really well. And did yeah. the television program put you in contact with some more key people to help you? Um, there were contacts made, but you got to sort of hustle as well. It's not, not just, hey, Mark, here's uh, so-and-so, the A&R of, you know, you've got you to be confident, you've got to speak. And sometimes I just let those opportunities pass because I don't, I'm like, I'm not much of a talker. I just want my music to speak for itself. So, so, yeah. Yeah, so you got to get a bit pushier. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it, yeah. My, my family are like, you've got to get in there, man. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> so how would you describe your sound? My sound? Um... I don't, have, I don't know what genre to put it in, to be honest. It's eclectic. It's a acoustic soul. There's, a, I guess, pop as well as reggae influence. Um, but it's all based around the guitar. So I would just say acoustic, you can say, and a fusion of so many other things. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so once the EP now is out, which is yep. in, you know, any day now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and people can check out that on You can go to website. the website, which is smarklounds.com, as well as iTunes and... I'll be uh, yeah, posting stuff up and just telling people about the date, the exact date, which it should be out this end of this month. Okay. So fingers crossed. Radio. Yeah. And uh, in terms of live performances, you're doing yep. much work in that area? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm doing every Sunday, which, which is at South Bank. This is, you know, obviously for those outside Brisbane may not know, but um, that's every Sunday, as well as just coming off a European tour, which happened last month in June. Mm -hmm. So... Yep. Yeah, I mean, and that went really well. Great. Well, it's a <laughs> yeah. good, all, great experience, isn't it? And getting yourself known. Yeah, yeah. So That's what it. would you see as your ultimate goal musically? Ultimate goal, I would like, I mean, I would love to sing and perform as long as I could, as long as I can. Um, but ultimately, I would love to pass on, I guess, whatever skills I have. Because I've been doing workshops a lot in high schools around the southeast of Queensland. Fantastic. Yeah, so, and just finished a tour of that too, so... <laughs> Busy like, boy. Yeah, yeah, very busy. I, I just love, you know, whatever, like I said, I write from, from life experiences and whatever I sort of accumulate, I like to pass it back on to whoever wants to listen. Okay. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Mark. We yeah. look forward to hearing yeah. you musically in just one moment. No worries. But make sure you keep a look out for Mark's new EP. After the break, we will have a special performance by Mark Hans. Stay connected.
Well, now with a song from his new EP, The Redress. It's Mark Lowndes and a song entitled Afternoon. <laughs> Sunshine this afternoon. Thank you so much, Mark. What a fantastic song. And that is off his EP, Redress. You can check it out on iTunes. It's available very, very soon. So make sure you do a Google search. Find that for Mark Lowndes. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have on the program today. It's been a fantastic show. My thanks to Rick Burnett. Gwen Zappler and Mark Lowndes for coming in. Thank you too for tuning in to Connected. I'm Ashley Jones and as always, stay connected. <laughs> <laughs>